That was so stupid. <laughs> I almost, I almost completely missed it. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome to part 3 of the Hollowed Haunting Challenge Week. I am very excited for today's deck. This week has been a doozy. On Monday we got an undefeated run to kick off the week and then on Wednesday we followed it up with another undefeated run both from new players who have not yet submitted a challenge deck. This is their first time on the challenge week. So thank you guys so much. I encourage everybody, if you're not already, submit some decks. Next week, we got Splendid Reclamation as our build around card. Go ahead, start deck building, share them with us in our Discord. That link is down below. But today we have Angel Corrupted Hope with their uh, Azorius Hollowed Haunting list. Now this is very spirit based. You'll notice we've got quite a number of spirits in the deck. We've got Spectral Sailor, uh, Do Dorothea, Dorothea, that's the one. Uh, <laughs> we've got Rattle Chains. Uh, we also have Hanged Executioner, Skyclave Apparition, uh, Nevelgast Horror. Uh, we even have Catilda, the new Catilda in here, which is just an absolutely powerhouse card. And the idea is very simple. We play uh, basically like we normally would, uh, hoping to get a lot of extra spirits down, extra enchantments down, and obviously power out that Hollowed Haunting. Uh, now we do have a number of interesting little interactions that we'll kind of talk about. We've got Cartouches. So we have Cartouche of Solidarity, as well as Cartouche of knowledge both of which are pretty decent i mean they're fine uh but they work pretty well with the trials so we have trial of knowledge and trial of solidarity uh both of these are pretty good because if you play these out then play a cartouche it bounces these trials back to our hand we can replay them later for extra value off of the hollowed haunting uh, now, we do have Rally the Ranks in here. This is going to power up our creatures as well as that uh, Trial of Solidarity, hopefully getting a lot of power on the field very quickly. Uh, now, one thing I will notice, and Angel, I'm going to ask you in particular because I think this is the second time this has happened. This is totally fine. We got 18 lands. Now, I understand we cap out at four, so I totally get it, but uh, just keep in mind that it's going to be sometimes a little tricky to hit our land drops with this. I also think that because we've got a couple of Fabled Passages as four of them, it might be a little tricky to hit on turn. Even if we have the Fabled Passage, it might be a little tricky in the early turns to get the cards that we need out. So something to keep in mind, not something that you necessarily have to do anything, but we gotta, we gotta make sure that we're able to play our spells. But I really liked this build. I thought it was really creative. I love that the idea of bringing in cartouches as well as the trials. So I kind of wanted to give this one a shout, just see what we can do uh, and hopefully have some fun along the way. So we're gonna send it through three games, guys. We gotta get three wins. So Angel, this is gonna be a tough one, but if you can do it, everybody wins this week, which is a really exciting thing. So let's go ahead, let's jump into game one. All right, guys, and here we are demonstrating that land issue a little bit right off the bat here. We've only got one land. So unfortunately, Angel, I don't think we can keep this one. We do kind of need to at least have two. If we have two, I feel a lot more comfortable with it. We've got plenty of plays on the lowdown on the curve, uh, and this is much, much better. I think we can absolutely keep this. I'm gonna throw one of these back here. Uh, now we do have the Spectral Sailor we can play right away. Uh, but we do have to shock ourselves to do it. I'm gonna do that though. We're gonna represent this. Uh, Spectral Sailor does have Flash, so we can play it at the end of the turn, which is quite nice, and then follow this up with the Vengeful Victim. I'm not even gonna try and say the name again because I'm gonna butcher it. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's throw that Sailor out. M kind of expect some kind of interaction here, whether it's a kill spell, a counter spell, something. Uh, but honestly, that's kind of okay if that happens. Uh, let's go ahead and play this out. Again, fully expecting that they might have some interaction here, but uh, they're not in a rush to use it. This is only one damage. Okay. So we know we are against rogues, which is terrifying, uh, but we'll do the best we can. We got this. Uh, I really love the Vengeful Victim. Again, avoiding the name. This is such a good card in my opinion. It does die here, but we get so much replayability out of this deck. Uh, and that really is a big positive towards this angel, and that's part of why I really wanted to try this out. Uh, we just have so much we can do with it. Uh, 
Um, all right. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to do this now. Uh, just to get something out here. I'm also just gonna go ahead and crack this Fabled Passage. Uh, I think we'll just get a white source. It doesn't matter too much. We've kind of got all the colors we need at this point. If we can get a fourth land, uh, that's really all we need. So again, Angel, totally understand why the decision for 18 lands is there, but I do think we need to uh, maybe up it to like 20. Just maybe 20. And maybe that's an overkill, I don't know. This could very easily get countered here, um, but the idea is if we can get that Soaring Thought Thief out, that'd be great. Obviously, that's not going to be the case, but I do want to save that Katilda as best we can, at least, because that can crawl us back into this game and uh, really, really do some damage. Now, we're, we're milling a good bit. We're down to 20 cards in the deck, so hopefully we can make something happen here. Um, let's see. Huh. Uh, I think we go for the Katilda, fully expecting they're going to have another counter. Um, but I think this is just the best thing we can do. We do have some other options, but I, I feel like that's probably the best. I'm not going to attack here. Um, they could very easily just have another Soaring Thought Thief, and I think we're just going to leave it at that. Looks like they didn't play it, though. Maybe we could have gotten a damage in. That's fine. Unfortunately, they're milling our Hollowed Haunting, which is kind of the whole point of the deck, so that's a little, a little sad, but <laughs> we'll try and make it work. Uh, another reason to hold on to this as an enchantment is for that. Um, let's go for it. I really doubt this works, uh, but I think we got to try it. I'm probably, yeah, we're probably running into a kill spell. It looks like that is the case. A little unfortunate, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead. We will attack in this time. Now, they may again have that Soaring Thought Thief, but... Looks like instead they've got a Thieves Guild Enforcer. I think they're just running it. They're just gonna be able to run it. They've got so many uh, instant speed interactions that it's gonna be really tricky for us to deal with this. Now, worth noting, we do have the Herald, which can tap something down, but uh, that's really about it. We're gonna let that enter tapped. Um, I think we pass with the Herald up. Yep. Uh, don't love this, but... Uh, yeah. This is gonna be interesting. Um, alright, so we have to do this now, otherwise we just die. And I think we probably just die anyway, but we can tap this down, and now if they attack in with both, we can just block the Enforcer. So it's very unfortunate, um, but I think there's nothing else we can do. We just got to go for that. I mean, it is what it is. Um, let's play out Katilda, but that's it. That's all we can do. And yeah, I think uh, I think we're definitely out of this one. Unfortunate uh, because they really just had control of the game the entire time. I really don't think we had an option. Um, Maybe we could have played a little better, but I really don't think there was too much we could have done there. So it is what it is. This is going to put us back up to exactly zero, uh, but perfectly fine. First game is a loss. So unfortunately, Angel, we're out of the running for the win, but we still have two more games. Let's see if we can get uh, at least one or two wins with this list. All right, guys, game two is here, and this is actually quite a quite a strong hand. I mean, we've got the one, two into three and four. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this. We also have the two lands, which obviously we at least need to in our opening hand, in my view. Uh, and I think that this is a pretty strong start. So we'll we'll do the best we can. Um, also, guys, as we get into this second game here, I just want to talk about something that uh, happened yesterday. Uh, very late yesterday, they announced a brand new digital only MTG Arena format, uh, Alchemy, which is interesting. And I, I apologize because I, I don't fully understand Alchemy. So if I say anything incorrectly, I just want to go ahead and say that off the bat. I apologize. I don't I don't know enough about it yet to be able to have a strong opinion on it. From what I have gathered, uh, and I actually have some information pulled up because I do want to make sure that I'm at least saying some things correctly here, uh, but from what I have gathered, let's go Spirit, that's going to power up all of our stuff. Um, it's essentially 
in tandem with standard. So the idea is that it's a re-release of like fixed cards in standard or some upgrades to cards in standard, some of which will include like digital only mechanics, uh, perpetual mechanics, things like that, that we don't normally get to see or can't see in paper magic. Uh, and it's kind of just on top of that, uh, or on top of standard, which I think is actually kind of interesting. Um, do I love it? Eh, not really. I mean, I don't hate it. I think there's a, a natural issue with it, which is very simply that we're overcomplicating things a little bit, um, which I mean, it is what it is. I think, you know, it's magic's a complicated game anyway. So adding another layer is is what it is. But the idea is that with every set, we're going to get an alchemy set along with it, if I'm understanding that correctly. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll read off here a couple of things. So it will regularly rebalance cards. So what that means from my understanding is to say that, you know, if this card is overly powered or whatever, maybe we up that mana cost a little bit, or maybe we um, down the mana if it's if it's the other way around. I mean, maybe there's some changes that have to be going on there. Uh, incorporating digital only mechanics. We kind of talked about that already. Uh, that's fine. I, I mean, it is what it is. And then it'll add supplemental cards with each set. So uh, we've some of the cards for this in a Strong Crimson Vow were actually spoiled already. Um, and it does add some interesting new stuff to to the standard environment. I'm very curious about how it actually goes. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I don't know how I feel about it 100% to be honest, but it's kind of cool, right? Like, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit, uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm a little on the fence about it. I feel like we're overcomplicating standard and standards kind of the, the set or, or the way to play that you don't have to overcomplicate things in my view. Um, now, keeping in mind, this doesn't replace standard. This is in tandem with standard. So if you go to play paper magic <clears throat> or even on arena, this isn't in replacement of standard, it's in tandem with, uh, which is good and bad, but I think this is a bit of an answer to all the bannings that they had to do, to be honest. Uh, this gives them an opportunity to rebalance the card without banning the card uh, in alchemy. So it keeps value, quote unquote, but it's a digital only format, so it really doesn't make any sense to, I, I don't know. I've got a lot of thoughts on it. I don't have a strong opinion on it other than I just feel like it's kind of, uh, it's a little, little much, uh, but that's fine. Um, hmm. Let's see what we can do. Um, wish we could drop the trial. Let's do this. I think that's the most bang for our buck and we can still attack him with the apparition here. Um, we'll see what happens. Also, guys, I apologize. I'm a little, uh, my allergies are a little rough this morning, so pardon me as I stuff a tissue in my nose. All right. Cool. Uh, the Skyclave Apparition was really, really clutch, by the way, on this Sithis. That's such a bad card for us to be up against um, because it, it draws them so many things and gains them life, and it's like, oh, we can't, we can't solve that problem. So very, very happy to get that off the field. They are going to attack in. Uh, I'll try and block. I'm assuming they've got something to do. I guess not. Why would you throw away? Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. Sure. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna rally the ranks. We're taking a bit of a turn off to do this, so I fully understand that that's not necessarily the best play, but we just don't have mana. Again, Angel, I think that's our problem is is just the mana. I think your deck is really creative, really fun. I just think we're not guaranteed the lands as we need them. Um, not that you ever guarantee the lands 100%, but I do think we could have like upped it by like two. Give it 20. Uh, just a little extra wiggle room is very important. Muldrotha, huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's really good. We don't have a whole lot we can do about that. Um, we can kind of not get them, but kind of do a little bit of fun stuff with the uh, Herald here. It's not going to be great, but it's something. Um, 
curious. So before they go to attacks, so we have to do this to... Oh man, yeah. Yeah, I think this is gonna just take us over. Uh, they're gonna get that, so that makes sense. I'm glad we got Sithis out of there though. That's very, very good. All right, ugh, I don't love this. Okay, they're gonna mill a few cards. Now, crucially, this doesn't necessarily hurt us as bad as some other decks because of stuff like this. Um, let's go ahead and drop this. We're gonna tap Muldrotha down um, just so they can't really safely attack in. They've spent their mana this turn as well, so. But again, we just don't have, we don't have anything we can do. Um, hmm. Literally the best thing we can do is this. Hopefully draw a land. We did not draw a land. Um, I think we say no attacks. I don't know, this is a this is a problem. They've got the Ruinous Blast as well, which just means that they can blow up basically anything they want. Um, yeah, I think this is, the writing is on the wall here. <laughs> All right, they eat the card out of the graveyard, which means we can't play it again. Um, which is fine. Just taking away the resources. Um, yep. There's the land. They get a card and, what, two life now off of this? Uh, and they can just use this to play another land, uh, which is on its own very good for them now. So essentially what this does is add so much value to everything that they are doing. Um, cards in the graveyard, perfectly fine. Muldrotha helps you replay them. They essentially, this, putting a card in your graveyard is essentially like drawing a card. So these mill cards just help you out so much. Uh, to Tatiova, uh, essentially just gives you added cards for playing lands. Like, <laughs> yes, uh, that's good. Now playing lands has even more value, um, and they gain life off of it. So it's just, you know. Yep. Uh, I mean, very cool, but really not great. Uh, and we can't, I mean, we can play the Hanged Executioner, which isn't a bad card, but it doesn't, it doesn't really do that much at the moment, but I think we just have to. I don't think we have a better choice. Um, oh, I guess we could have, uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna attack him. This is not boding well for us here, but it is what it is. If we draw a land, we actually <clears throat> can get rid of the Muldrotha, but I mean, chances are they just could Urza's Ruinous Blast and get rid of all the permanents that aren't legendary, which is all of mine. Uh, and only a couple of theirs, I suppose. Oh, Angel, I want you to do well, my man. I really do. I think, uh, I think it's, again, I really love the creativity of your deck here. I think it's really fun. It's just, need that little extra. Uh, take some time. I do encourage everybody, and this, Angel, this isn't directed at you. This is directed at literally everybody that submits decks to this. Test out your decks first. Um, I know I, I've seen a lot of people just like go in and as soon as I post uh, a card, they're like, oh, got to start building. And then like 30 minutes later, they give me a deck, uh, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm very happy to see that. <laughs> but um, give yourself a little bit of time to come back to the deck, test it out a little bit and see how it works on the ladder. It's great to bot match because it's very easy to see if the deck can do what you want it to do. Um, but playing it on the ladder is vastly different and you need to test it out there to make sure that it's going to work the way you think it's going to work. Um, just a little bit of advice, but I think, uh, I think this is one of those things where as, as an example, Angel, and again, I'm not trying to pick on you for the land thing, I promise. But as an example, if we test this on the ladder, we very easily can tell like, okay, lands might be an issue. So we just gotta fix that issue. And that's a very, very simple fix. It's something we can very easily do, but I think it's something that we need to know ahead of time. Um, and account for that, make those small updates, and then we're good to go. Like, then the deck, at I think, stands a much better chance of getting some wins. I think that's all that it amounts to. Uh, so I just, I encourage everybody 
test out your decks first. Um, now again, we don't have a draw here that could actually solve this problem. Uh, and it, they also have another Ruinous Blast. I'm gonna go ahead and concede here. There's nothing we can really do. So we'll pass, we'll go to game three. Hopefully we can get a win there, Angel. We got, we got this, don't worry. All right, guys, here we are for our third and final game. Uh, and this is a, a keep. We've got the two lands, we've got the rally, we've got a couple of uh, really interesting spells here. So I think we definitely go for this one. Let's go ahead and throw this out. I think the play is Vengeful Victim first and then rally the ranks on the following turn, hoping to power it up a little bit. I mean, that's a hit for five right there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and this does set us up later for being able to, uh, to throw some stuff out. We also have the Herald if we can get a third land, which is useful. Uh, yep, let's go ahead and play the Vengeful Victim. Hopefully we draw a land this upcoming turn. Uh, a land would be really, really helpful. Uh, just to keep us moving in the right direction here. Got a Blood Aspirant as well. Uh, this is going to be really good on them. Um, we could block this. Ugh, I'm not. All right, no land again. Unfortunately, that's just going to be the persistent problem, I think. But let's go ahead and do this. I am going to attack in here. We're going to deal five. Uh, now we could have easily just hung on to that, but we've got another in hand for the Blood Aspirant that's eventually going to deal a lot of damage, so uh, we do kind of want to push through as much as we can. This is a very interesting one. Very interesting deck. Uh, again, no land, so we play this out um, and hope for the best. We got it. Um, I mean, this is a bit of a wall for them. It's a 5-5, five, five, but the, the problem we run into is it sacrifices itself, so we can block once. Uh, one good block. They have a world tree. That's interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, I assume they're going to start sacrificing some stuff. What they can do is deal one damage to a creature, and that creature can't block. Uh, but instead, they're just going to... Hmm. In a deck like this, I would have at least attacked with something. Um, they've already passed through. So they're putting their counters on, which is obviously quite good. Um, and then they can return that from their graveyard to their hand. Sure. All right. Uh, we have to do this just to be able to draw a card, I think. We just have to get a land. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> Um, all right, cool. So they're going to sacrifice this again, make it so this can't block. They're going to attack in for nine. Excuse me. No, not nine, six. Um, but then they do get that decayed zombie. This is a really cool deck, by the way. Uh, interesting. Okay. So we can give something hate or hexproof here, excuse me, uh, which is worthwhile. Um, what do we get rid of? I think it can't be Katilda. I think it's Trial. If we get a second white source. We can start attacking in with the Katilda, which gains us some of this life back, uh, which is really crucial. Um, the Rattle Chains is going to make uh, their sacrifice here not do quite as much. Um, very interesting. They haven't been attacking though because. It makes it so we can't block, which just seems kind of silly. I think they may, might not be uh, reading the cards as well as maybe they should have, but that is okay. Um, again, no land. <laughs> we just have to pass. We can't do anything. Um, so, so crucial that we have land in this one. Um, all right. They've got the Cauldron Familiar. That's scary. Now we could have left this up. Um, it looks like they're probably just going to try and kill it this turn, which I mean, makes a lot of sense. They just do another sacrifice here on one of these little zombies or the cauldron familiar, I guess they get another two, two and they do all this or do they get? Oh, it only. OK, excuse me. This only triggers once e once each turn. Um, and the problem is they're very quickly outpowering us here. So, ah, uh, yeah, um, 
Unfortunately, not a lot we can do here. Uh, yeah, we need like an extinction event or some kind of exile sweeper that would get rid of all this. Hey, we got a land. Um, now what? <laughs> I mean, Katilda is good. Uh, alternatively, we can just kind of try and spread things out here with the Hanged Executioner. I'm gonna go for Katilda though. It's a lifelinker. I think that that's important. Um, Cause other, I, we need to get that going. You know what I mean? Like we need to start gaining life back because otherwise we are super dead. Um, probably gonna be pretty dead regardless, but uh, this is a turn where they, they need to spend some time replaying. Oh no. All right. Well, that's much worse now. Um, Okay, uh, yep. <laughs> I would, if I were them, I would be attacking in. I would have attacked in a long time ago. Um, they must be trying to get some weird combo thing going or something like that. We did get the land, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, interesting, okay, so, lifelink pro vampire, <sighs> hmm. I honestly think we just need to spread things out here as best we can. Um, I'm gonna do this. Now, do we attack in? We can, oh wait, we just win. Why am I dumb? We just win. That was so stupid, <laughs> I, almost, I almost completely missed it. All right, we got a win, Angel. Yes, we got there, my friend. Let's talk about the deck. All right, so. We talked about it, we harped on it, the lands were the issue, but it is okay because again, Angel, the creativity that you, you put into this list I think is quite fun. I think everybody, everybody, Angel, this isn't just you, please make sure you test your decks first. I think um, some of you do and it shows, some of you don't, and I think that also shows. And that's okay either way because again, it's just really nice to have you guys submitting decks. It's really fun. So please don't get anything wrong here. I'm not trying to say like you shouldn't submit if you don't test your deck, nothing like that. I am simply saying if you want to compete and put something out there that can get a lot of wins, uh, just make sure that you're testing it. Make sure that you know the faults of the deck and can address them before we go into recording for the next week. That is all I'm trying to say. I certainly want you guys to be submitting if you would like to and be a part of this and win, but speaking of winning, we got two winners this week. Uh, let me go ahead, let's pull these guys up. So, Ender Seas, excuse me, uh, and uh, The Last Orphan. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys being a part of this. Again, Angel, thank you as well. We also had Uro and Breaded and Fried submitting decks, and I believe we might have had a couple of others as well, but just want to thank everybody for submitting decks, being a part of this. But The Last Orphan and Ender Seas, we'll reach out to you over on Discord. We'll get your information and send you some, uh, some proxy rewards. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Again, feel free to build for next week. Splendid Reclamation is the card, so good luck to you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon.